Uh, we have been discussing the moment distribution method over the last few lectures and today we are going to be considering the moment distribution of a frame with sway included in it. So, let me take, uh, I will explain this, I have given you the background behind this uh, in an earlier lecture and let me illustrate what I meant by actually solving a particular problem. I will start off with a simple problem and then we will go on to a more difficult problem in the next lecture, so that you understand uh, what is the basis for the entire uh, procedure. Okay. So, Okay. So, here the question is determine end moments and support So, this is the problem statement for you. Okay. Let us start the procedure. The first procedure is again to determine, you know, I mean I just said this is a frame with a sway, but you have to convince yourself. So, you actually need to find out all the degrees of freedom. Uh, how many degrees of freedom? Well, you know 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 3 into 4. 12 unconstrained degrees of freedom, 3 plus 2, 5 restraints, 1, 2, 3 constraints. Degrees of freedom, 12 minus 5 minus 4 is 4 degrees of freedom. So, degrees of freedom are equal to 4. What are the 4 degrees of freedom? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, note that in this particular case, there are three rotational degrees of freedom and one translation and therefore, this is a frame with sway. Okay. So, let us start. What did I say? What was the first procedure? The first procedure was to actually restrain the sway. So, the first problem is going to be how do I restrain the sway by actually doing this and therefore, I am going to get a reaction over here. Okay, I'm going to get a reaction over here, and so this is the frame without. 
So now here, what do I do? Well, this is the structure. I find out, I solve the entire problem. I solve it by finding out first the fixed end moments A B, fixed end moments B C B A. There is no thing, so this is equal to zero. Fixed end moment B C is equal to fixed end moment C B is equal to zero and fixed end moment at this is A B C D fixed end moment at C D and fixed end moment at D C are equal to zero. All of them are equal to zero and since fixed end moments are equal to zero fixed end moments are equal to zero what would the moment distribution give me? Note that if fixed end moments are zero all joints you have the moment equilibrium. So therefore, the moment distribution for the frame without sway in this particular case becomes that we know what the moments are going to be. M A B is equal to M B A is equal to M B C is equal to C B is equal to C D is equal to D C is equal to 0. There are no member end moments. And therefore, if I take equilibrium of this particular case, since moments are equal to 0, you will see directly that this R is equal to 20 kilonewton meter. Okay? So, in this particular case, because of the special load that I have considered here, the computation of this R, the restraint, is very simple. And the frame without sway is actually a trivial solution. You do not need to do the moment distribution at all. Now, understand this that this is a special case because I am introducing you to the concept of frames with sway and that is why I have chosen a situation where a frame without sway does not actually require any uh, moment distribution. This is not generally the case. Okay? Next time, we are going to be looking at a particular problem where you will see that uh, you are going to have a situation where the moment distribution even for the frame without sway is going to give you a non-trivial solution and then you will see that to compute this R, you will have to actually do a, solve a lot of equilibrium equations and get to this particular value of R. Okay? Here it is trivial and therefore, I had no problems in computing the value of R. So, now what do I do? What is the next step? The next step is to release this R and see what happens to the structure What happens to this structure when you allow it to move? So, that means let us just say that this is some unknown quantity delta. Okay? So, what is going to happen? Note that when I take this delta, I am assuming that fixed end, right? everything is B and C are clamped. So, if B and C are clamped, how will the rotation look like? You will see that it will look like this. Because since this point goes here, this point cannot go up, it has to only go this way. And the amount it goes by is delta to ensure that B C remains. And so, okay. So, what are the fixed 10 moments? For the calculating the fixed end moments, very easy. All I need to do is find out what the rotation from the chord is and plug it into my equation. So, if I put that, what is my uh, theta AB equal to? Delta, this is 7.5. 
So theta AB is equal to delta by 7.5, positive or negative? From the chord to the tangent, anticlockwise, positive. From the chord, so theta AB is equal to theta BA is equal to delta by 5. And what can we say about theta BC and theta CB both equal to 0? What about theta CD? Theta CD is equal to delta by 5 and this is also anticlockwise, so it's delta by 5. Okay, so can I compute the fixed end moments? Well, all I need to do is I need to plug it into my uh, equation and if you look plug it into my equation, what do I get? I get that fixed end moment at A B is equal to 4 E I by L. L is 7.5 okay multiplied by theta a b which is delta by 7.5 plus 2 e i upon l multiplied by delta 7.5 this is equal to 6 e i upon 7.5 squared and this is equal to fixed end moment at B A. Okay. So, this is fixed end moment at A B and B A. What are the fixed end moments at B C and C B? They are equal to 0. What is the fixed end moment at C D? It is equal to 3 E i upon delta multiplied by delta by 5. So, this is equal to 3 i delta upon 25. Okay. So, these are my fixed end moments. The only problem over here is that I do not know what my uh, values are. Okay. So, if you look at it, uh, we had the situation that IAB and IBC were 1.5. So, I have to multiply by 1.5 actually. So, this becomes 4 EI into 1.5 and 1.5 here. So, this becomes 1.5 here. Okay. So, this one turns out to be equal to point. 0 0.0267 delta and this turns out to be equal to 33 uh, times so this is equal to um, ah, let me forget this. Let me not put this in. Uh, let me just compute this directly. This will be equal to 6. So, it is going to be 1.2 E i delta upon 7.5. Okay. Uh, and this is going to be equal to uh, point 0.1. So, this is going to be point 0.12 EI delta. Okay. This becomes uh, 3, 3 uh, 40, uh, 30 by 4. So, 30 by 4 it becomes 4.8 upon 30. So, this becomes point one four point eight upon thirty is equal to point one six EI 
delta 0.16 uh, delta. Okay. So now, if you look at it, that what you get essentially is uh, that the fixed ten moments turn out to be in this fashion. Point one six E I delta. zero fixed ten moment at C D is equal to point one two E I by delta. Okay. Note that the fixed ten moments depend on delta. Okay. Now here what I am going to do is I am going to actually assume a certain value of uh, delta. Okay? So, if I assume a particular value of delta, then what happens? Uh, I am just going to say that let us assume that E i delta is equal to 100. I am going to assume it and then we will see what happens. So, assume in that particular case you will say see that this will be equal to 160, this becomes equal to 120. Now, I have numbers with which I can do a, a moment distribution. So, let us now first, so we have done the fixed end moments, now let us look at the distribution factors. Okay? So, for the distribution factors, I need to know what K A B and K B A are equal to 1.5 i upon 7. So, this is i by 5. K B C which is equal to C B is equal to 1.5 upon 10. This is equal to 0.2 i, this is equal to 0.15 i and finally, we have K C D okay, which is equal to uh, three fourths I upon five. So this turns out to be point one five I. Okay. So, now once we have this particular thing, now we can find out the distribution factors. Uh, how many uh, joints? There are two joints. So, distribution factor B A is equal to 0.2 i upon the summation of this which is 0.35 i. So, you essentially have point five seven one and D B C is equal to point one five upon point three five which is equal to point four two nine. And then finally we have at C we have C B point one five point one five so it's point five and D C D is equal to 0.5. What can we say about carryover factors? Carryover factor, let me put down the carryover factors here itself. C B A is going to be half, which is going to be equal to C B C C C B. However, C <coughs> C to D is going to be equal to 0. Okay? So, having put all of that in, let us now do the moment distribution. So, I have
Now remember, left side for this, right side for this, bottom for this, top for this, left side for this, and right side for this. Okay, so here I have 1.0, whatever comes in distributes here. Here, what do I have? I have 0.571, here I have 0.429, here I have 0.500, Five zero, and here, since there's no moment, we got it. And what are the values of the moments that I need to put in? Fixed end moment at AB was equal to <coughs> plus one sixty. This is also plus one sixty. What was the fixed end moment here? Zero. What is the fixed end moment here? Zero. What is the fixed end moment here? Plus 120. What is the fixed end moment here? Zero. Okay. So this is my uh, the values. Okay. So I'm going to now start doing the moment distribution, and let us just go through the process. Okay. What I get over here is, uh, in this particular case, it turns out to be uh, distribute. I'm going to do the distribution together. So over here, I get uh, minus 60, minus 60. Distribution over here is going to be uh, 4 over 7, so it's going to be 640 upon 7, which is equal to minus uh, 91.4, and this is going to be uh, 480, so this is going to be minus um, 68 .6. Okay, now the next step is the carryover. So from here I have carryover to here. So this becomes minus 45.7. Okay, minus 45.7. I have carryover from here to here. So this is minus 34.5. Here I get minus 30, okay, and no carryover here, okay. So the next step is distribution. This just needs to be distributed. So this becomes plus 17.2, distribution done, plus 17.1, distribution done. Here, the 30 has to be distributed. Uh, so what we have is, uh, here it becomes seventeen point one. This becomes plus twelve point nine. Okay. And uh, so this distribution done. Now we do the carryover process. 17.1 over here will become plus 8.6. Here the distribution will go as plus 6.5, okay, and here there is no distribution. 
So now, uh, and I need the distribution from here to here, so that 17.2 distribution becomes plus 8.6. Okay, so now I need to uh, distribute this. If you look at this, I need to distribute this and uh, if I continue with my distribution process, I'm going to now, you know, just come over here so that I can keep adding. Okay, and here I'm going to just go in this direction. So this is going to be uh, distributed over here is going to be uh, plus, sorry, minus 3.2. This is going to be minus 3.3. So this is distribution done, distribution done. Here plus 8.6 uh, when we go mm, uh, 4 by 7, so that becomes 34.4, uh, so 34.4 becomes uh, minus uh, 4, 24, so 4.9 and this becomes minus 3.7, block here, block here. Okay, now uh, uh, let's put this together over here. So I'm going to have uh, this come um, to, to this point. So this will go, this will go in this direction, and this will come here. So this becomes minus two point five. Is the distribution here? The minus 3.7 goes over here, it becomes minus 1.9, okay, minus 1.9 and the distribution from this turns out to be minus 1.6, okay. So I am going to do my final distribution, why? Because if you look at it, I want to go down. Okay, so if I do this distribution, I'll get it equal to plus 1, so that's the distribution. This one turns out to be plus 0.9, okay, and when I distribute this, I get uh, plus 0.9 here and plus 0.7 here, okay. And note that I am not going to carry over any of these because these have gone down into the less than 1 percent level. So once I have done that, I can add these up, okay. Note the plus 9 needs to come over here as plus 0.5. So here also this goes this also goes this way, this also goes this way. So all I need to do now is add these up and when I add these up, what do I get? I get 177.1 minus 96.3. Uh, 96 so I have 177.1 minus 96.3 uh, sorry, uh, 178 minus 96.3, so I get 781.7, okay, 81.7 and here I get, uh, so this is plus 81.7, if I go through this, okay, I get minus 81.7. Here I get uh, plus 168.169.1, 169.1. So this becomes minus 2, minus 2, minus 43.7. So minus 43.7 becomes 1, 
becomes 124.9 okay and let us see what I get over here my uh, plus 60 plus 77.1 plus 77.9 plus 78 plus 78 minus uh, 3.3 is plus 74.9 okay plus 74.9 plus 74.9 this also turns out to be minus 74.7 okay and we have our member end moments and so once we have the member end moments let us see what we get in terms of the uh, the values uh, themselves okay so let us see so I have over here plus 124 so this plus 124 is going to be in this direction 124 okay um, then I have plus 81.7 okay then I have this I have this member this member is equal to 81.7 and this is going to be 74.7 um, this is 0 this is 74.7 Okay, now because of these, uh, we can find out what the shear forces are. So due to this, I'm going to get a shear force in this direction. So this is going to go in this way. So ultimately, 124. Uh, so this is going to be 1206.6. So this is going to be 206.6 divided by. 7.5 okay this is going to be equal to this way so this is also going to be in this direction and this is going to be 74.7 by 5 so if you really look at it this force R that is going to require to do this is going to be equal to 206 7.5 plus 74 7.5 okay so this is equal to 3 by 4 30 by 4 so this is going to be equal to 826 upon 30 so this is equal plus so this is going to be equal to 114.94 and this part is going to be equal to uh, 27 point Five, five, plus 14.94 so this is going to be equal to 42.49 42.5 let's say so that means to generate these moments I require 42.5 but what's the actual R it is 20 so what are the final moments final moments you'll see is going to be equal to 20 upon 42.5 multiplied by all the moments and if you take those you will see that this turns out to be equal to 
57.4 this is going to be equal to 39 here this is of course going to be 39 this is going to be 35 by 7 here we're going to have I'm sorry, this is going to be this way and this is going to be this way 35.7 here this is 0 and so if you look at the, at the moments uh, the, uh, the support reactions the support reactions become something like this at this point I have a moment of 57.4 kilonewton meter a 7.47 reaction here and a 12.86 kilonewton moment here and over here I have this one is downwards, this one is upwards, 7.47 and there's going to be a force of 7.14 and this is the load 20 point kilonewton. So therefore, the point that I want to go back and point out to you is that uh, you see, we did not know what the delta was. So what we did was to start off we assumed you see we know that if delta was there this would be 0 0.61 EI 0.16 EI delta and this would be 0.12 EI delta we knew this ok so now uh, you, know, you can't do this so I am just saying that assume we don't know what the delta value is so I am just saying that assume EI delta see all of all of them have EI delta in them so I assume that assume EI delta equal to some value I have assumed EI equal to 100 you might have actually taken it see uh, you know you could have actually taken it to be some other, other value ok for example one way that a lot of people work with is that take the largest value to be given by 100 ok so I would have said that 0.16 EI uh, delta is equal to 100. I could say that it is equal to 100 but note that as soon as I say that it is equal to 100 then I know what EI value is and I can substitute that ok and if you look at it that you if you taken this to be 100 this would be 75. Only point that I am trying to make is it does not matter what you take ok. Uh, you need to be consistent that these values need to be taken together and therefore, in this particular case, I have taken 160, 120. You might equally have taken it to be 175. It is all relative. Okay? So, once you have done that, the fixed end moments. Okay? So, you, you solve through the fixed end moments. And once you get the, you do the moment distribution. The moment distribution procedure, if you note, is identical to that of beam again. Now, you see, once you have fixed end moments, the moment distribution procedure is unique. You have to compute the stiffnesses. Once you compute the stiffnesses, you can compute the distribution factors, you can cal calculate the carryover factors and then once you put those in, you go through the moment distribution process. This time, I actually did it so that I am doing it simultaneously I am releasing this and this distribution then do all the carryovers ok once you do the carryovers you look at what is the net moment unbalanced balance that and you keep doing it and as I said that this procedure is going to be convergent and we can get the final values now note these values have no meaning Okay, if you had taken this to be 100 and this to be 75, these values would be different. 
So these values per se do not have any meaning. But once you have these values, okay, these would be the values if you had a certain value of delta. That is, since you don't know the value of delta, these would be these values have no meaning. However, once you have these values, these are the member end moments. And once you have these member end moments, you actually have to go and put them and compute you know what force is required to get these kind of moments. Okay, this way, how I, well, I computed this and this and I know that this plus this is equal to this. So all I found out are by adding this and this and I got it to be 42.5. Now, I know my R value is 20 kilonewtons. So therefore, what do I have to do? Well, all I have to do is, I have got the membrane moments. For a force of 42.5, these are the moments. Okay, so what would be for 20? Okay, linear system, so you can actually scale. So scaling would imply what? That for 42.5 you have this. So for 20, the value would be 124 multiplied by 20 upon 42 multiplied by 20 upon 42.5 multiplied by 20 upon 42.5 multiplied by 20 upon 42.5 you will see that r is equal to 20 okay so r equal to 20 that means all i need to do is scale all these values by 20 into 42.5 and once i scale the values this is what i get so once i get this this is the ultimate solution I have got the reactions at the supports, I have got the membrane moments. So my problem is solved. So in a sense, I just want to go back and review that a frame which has sway, how do you tackle that problem? First you take frame without sway. Now in this particular case, when you take, took frame without sway, Okay, because there were no member loads, the fixed end moments were zero and I could compute the restraint reaction directly. Okay? Once I calculate the restraint reaction, I can actually apply uh, opposite force to get delta. So now I take as if the frame was swayed. Okay? And so let me just write down the procedure for you so that you can get. So this is moment distribution for a frame with sway. First, restrain sway. Two, solve problem without. Because once you restrain sway, you can solve problem without sway. Now, once you, so you do the moment distribution, solve problem without sway is moment distribution. Okay. Once you do moment distribution, okay, and you get the member and moments you can recompute restraint reaction for if reaction R is equal to 0, then frame does not have sway and problem. Whatever member and moments you get 
at the end of the problem without sway you have that is your member end moments. However, if R is not equal to 0, then what do you do? Then 6 assume sway equal to delta and find fixed end moments. How do you find out fixed end moments? Through kinematics. So you find out the fixed end moments through kinematics and once you have found out the fixed end moments through kinematics, the next step is moment distribution of fixed end moments. 8. So, moment distribution will give you a member and moments. Once you have member end, you can compute load required at original restraint point to get these member and moments. Okay? So, let this be equal to R1. Then, actual sway member and moments are equal to R upon R1 into these member and moments and 10 total member and moments are equal to non sway moments plus sway moments. Okay, uh, I just wanted to kind of list out uh, the overall uh, details. Okay, so now I think you should be able to solve uh, a problem with sway. Now, I am going to take up some more problems with single sway next lecture. I just want to briefly tell you how to do, suppose we have two sways. Let me take that problem. In this particular case, you can find out that you have two sways, delta 2, delta 1. How would you solve this problem? This problem is solved in this way. The no sway case no sway case becomes this. Okay? Compute R one and R two. The the reactions at the two supports. That you can do because once you get the member and moments you can always compute what these reactions are. Okay, then plus okay. Compute this load which is going to give you a delta. 
okay, compute this. And now here you can get the reaction at this point, okay, plus So now you see, note that this is the no sway case, this is the first sway case, this is the second sway case. You can find out the fixed end moments, do the moment distribution and compute the member end moments and compute these. Ultimately you will see that this plus this plus this, so you see that R2 double prime minus R2 prime minus R2 is equal to 0. And we also have R1 prime minus R1 minus R1 double prime equal to 0. Note that this is a function of delta 2. This is a function of delta 2. This is known. This is known. This is a function of delta 1. This is a function of delta 1. You have two equations which are a function of delta 1 and delta 2. Okay? So, you can actually find out what those delta 1 and delta 2 are and then multiply, add these that revised values of this and the revised values of this to this to get the final moment. So, it is here you have to when you have double sway you have to solve uh, equations in the two sways together. Okay? This is I just wanted to introduce the concept to you uh, you know I mean you do not have to solve a particular problem you can look at it yourself. Okay? So, finally, just to state that when you have frames, okay, there is a likelihood of sway displacements, then the moment distribution procedure requires you to solve multiple moment distribution problems to be able to get the final member end moments. Okay? I am going to take up another problem next lecture which will illustrate to you all these procedures over and over again. I hope you have understood how to do the moment distribution method for both beams as well as frames and hopefully by the next lecture which will be my last lecture on moment distribution, you should be able to understand the moment distribution procedure completely. Thank you very much. Bye.